That's my favorite of his. Once Upon a Time? Yeah, I just, I dude, I saw it like three times. And the last time I saw it, I saw it in his theater. And he literally Ooh. had like the, the Rick Dalton, like the Leonardo's character. He had like the posters. It was a total immersive experience. Like those movies really happened. Yeah. It was so awesome. <laughs> and uh, no, I just thought it was like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio's performance when he's like, he's in the scene and he's got nothing. He's trying to like, you know, do all this. <laughs> it's just like, he did that so well. And then he had that little speech impediment. Like every time I watched it, I saw something else. It had one of my favorite cars of all time. It had this, I think it was a 67 Cadillac Eldorado. I love that car. Mm. And then I also like how, you know, there's always was this mystique of the Manson family and he just reduced them to a bunch of lazy fuck who didn't want to get a job. Right. And I also, I think I noticed this on the third one. I don't know if this is true, but I think nobody says hippie without saying fucking in front of it. Mm. It's always fucking hippie. Interesting. Good <laughs> Remember, catch. It's the big thing of margarita. Why don't you fucking hippies? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the self-hatred. Yes. Yeah. The self-hatred of that. And he was going, do, 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 like making fun of his speech impediment. <laughs> you just saw the whole... Oh the yeah, whole thing. It was you know, and Pitt is so. I love when he sleep. when he opens that beer and he's got the mask and like the foam shoots up on his face a little. Bit. <laughs> he didn't. Care. He's just sitting there with that that. <laughs> that oh yeah, beer gun, and they kind of leave it open. So yeah. good. I think he killed his wife. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, it's the best work. Uh, Leo's. I mean, Brad Pitt's great. First time you watch it, I was just like, I want to be, like, Brad Pitt's the guy I want to be. Yeah. And then the second time I watched it, I was like, oh, my God, I'm just like Leo's character. I have an emotional fucking <laughs> mess. Well, I don't know what part you walked out in. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and try to talk you into that masterpiece. It's one of my, I, it might be my favorite thing That's what you done. said. That's not slice of life. It was the Manson murders with a happy ending. Oh. I just like how he took all the fear out of the Manson family. He's just like, there's a bunch of stupid fucking hippies who killed... A bunch yeah, of creative, sad. talented people in the prime of their lives, um, and then the other people who weren't in show business down the street that he didn't. There's I want to know when people. you can buy that movie and own it. Like what? Because back in the day, you just buy like the DVD. Because that is like uh, like you're going on tour. That's like that's going to be a good fellas movie for me, where I'm going to watch that thing a times. five thousand times in yeah. my life and always see something new in it. And then it becomes like like the second time I saw it. I realized how great the actor playing, uh, I'm trying to talk all this surface. Well, this this guy, he plays a director that's going to direct Leonardo DiCaprio and like what that guy does with that role and how many inside jokes, you don't have to be in show business, how funny that guy is. Um, it's like, you know, the 90th time I watched Goodfellas, I realized how funny that guy was, uh, the guy who had the wigs. That's my favorite quote from Tarantino. What? I saw an interview one time and they were saying like, yeah, we know I was trying to write movies and stuff, you know, and they were going like, you can't do this, you can't do that. He's like, wait a minute. He goes, I can do whatever the f I want. He's like, that. well, that's why your movies are great. Whether you like the them or not, guy. you're just like, that's that's the comic I want to yes. watch. I can say whatever the f I want. Yeah. Good. I want to see you totally unfiltered. So anyways, let's talk about, let's talk about movies. I finally went out and saw Quentin Tarantino's eighth movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. All right. And you know they got that website, uh, Tomatoes, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. All right. Well, I'm going to start my own here. All right. Old Freckles, thumbs up to thumbs down. I f***ing loved that movie. I f***ing loved that movie. That was the fastest two hours and 45 minutes of my life. When the dude came out, you know, and he made a joke. We were at the arc light. You know, when he came out, he goes, this is uh, Quentin Tarantino's movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It stars Margot Robbie and a bunch of other people. And that was in reference to, every, well, I guess a bunch of people were disappointed that she wasn't in the movie more, which I thought she was in the movie a lot. She didn't say a lot, but she conveyed a lot. You know? I don't know. But then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I understand why so many women are complaining because I think throughout history in Hollywood, you know, I don't know about you guys, but personally, I am waiting for beautiful blonde white women to be represented positively in American cinema. <laughs> I don't know. I saw the trailer and I was like, this is a Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio movie. I don't know where the fucking confusion was. Um, I'm no, and by the way, no spoiler alert. I should have said that early on. Everybody just shut up my podcast. I'm not going to ruin anything other than to say that I fucking loved it. And I've been having a great, I went with my lovely wife. And we've been, you know, throwing around all of our theories and all of that shit. 
My buddy Dean's already seen it twice. I got to see it again because I was spending a lot of time looking at the cars. Um, and there was all these great, classic, hilarious lines in it. I absolutely wire to wire loved, loved that movie. Um, and one of my favorite things one time, uh, Quentin Tarantino, he was talking about making movies and people were saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. And he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can do whatever the fuck I want. And those are the people. Those are the people you, you want to go see their movies. Those are the comedians you want to see. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. You know? Jerk offs. Anyway, so I guess there was some sort of scandal about that. I thought Margot Robbie absolutely fucking killed it in the movie. And I thought she was a major part of it. You know, what she was conveying, the story that she was telling without speaking. I mean, the skill set just to do that was amazing. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'm talking about it too much. But I absolutely loved it. I give it a giant, pasty, freckled thumbs up. Way the fuck up. So, uh, if you're thinking about seeing it. And believe me, it, it flies by. It flies by. I loved it. Talk about some of your favorite holiday movies. Um, favorite holiday movies. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That has a Christmas scene in it, doesn't it? No? I don't know. I just think a guy hammered in his pool drinking f margaritas out of a pitcher. To me, that's It's a Wonderful Life. Hey, dude, when this thing's over, let's smoke a f***ing bat and I want to watch that movie. I f I love that movie like I haven't loved a movie in so long. Like one of those things like I need to own this movie. I need to learn every line of this movie. Like I'm going to do just I'm going to do just like a car pass of that movie, writing down all of the cars. This guy like is a stunt man. Danger is, is his game. So he has this really dangerous car. And then you watch him just drive like a f lunatic. I like it. My hands are registered weapons. That means if I kill anybody. I will go to jail. He goes, anybody goes to jail if they kill someone in a fight. It's called manslaughter. Margot Robbie played Sharon Tate. Watching her go in there, like, I don't know. I, I kind of got like a kick out of the fact that she didn't seem nervous and was enjoying people. Dude, and I loved Margot Robbie's performance and all of that. And what Tarantino basically did was show a young, excited actor and mother in the prime of her life with the whole life ahead of her. And he wrote a happy ending for her. Yeah. And so many critics missed that with that bean counting. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, can, can you even write a movie? Do you even know what the fuck you're talking about?